My name is Ivan Sergeyev. I am the application scientist in charge of DNP here at uh, Bruker US. And uh, today, uh, before I uh, begin, I would just like to mention that uh, this is the second webinar of our DNP webinar series, uh, with the first one having been uh, the introduction to solid-state DNP NMR, covering a lot of DNP basics, uh, the various mechanisms, hardware, sample preparation, common applications, and much more. So there's a link on this slide uh, for those of you who haven't seen it. And um, I'll also direct your uh, attention to this webinar um, on some of the intro slides coming up. So to give you uh, a brief outline of the webinar today, um, I will start with uh, a couple of slides of overview where um, I'll try to summarize the earlier presentation as compactly as possible. But then the real focus uh, here is on the uses of DNP in the pharmaceutical industry and um, the kinds of common applications uh, we envision for DNP within pharmaceuticals, as well as some of the challenges that uh, we may face. Uh, then um, I'll turn the presentation over to my colleague and collaborator, Dr. Yang Chao Su from Merck, uh, who will tell you about uh, specifically the use of uh, DNP enhanced solid state NMR in the study of pharmaceutical formulations. And we'll wrap up the webinar with a uh, Q&A session, which um, I'll explain a little bit later. So uh, to uh, begin to get into the rationale for DNP, uh, many of you who are familiar with NMR, of course, know that uh, NMR is an intrinsically rather insensitive technique. If we just look at the population imbalance between the two nuclear spin states at Boltzmann equilibrium, um, which is otherwise known as the polarization or magnetization of the sample, we see that it's very small. It's about 0.01% or about only 1 in 10 to the fifth spins uh, <clears throat> more in the lower energy state than in the higher energy state. And that imbalance has to be then picked up by our uh, NMR receiver coil via inductive coupling and amplified many times to give us our NMR signal. And that NMR signal is... Uh, not very large. So over the years, a very rich literature has uh, sprung up on efforts to uh, <clears throat> enhance or further amplify that signal. One of the most promising approaches uh, has been dynamic nuclear polarization, which uh, comes in various flavors but does have one broad principle in common, which is that we would like to take the much higher polarization of the electrons um, and these are unpaired electrons that are typically doped into the sample or that are naturally present in the sample to begin with, and transfer the, that polarization to the protons. Now, electrons have a much larger gyromagnetic ratio than the protons by a factor of about 660, and that number is also our maximum theoretical enhancement. So if we could uh, transfer 100% of the polarization of the electrons, which are about 9.5% polarized at 600 megahertz, as you can see here, to the protons, uh, we would achieve uh, a th an enhancement of about 660. Now, the way this works, uh, and as I mentioned, there are multiple DNP mechanisms, but uh, the most common is what's known as the cross effect. Uh, this commonly involves doping the sample with uh, some sort of nitroxide biradical. You can see a very common example here on the right-hand side of the slide called amupol. And uh, these nitroxide biradicals uh, represent a, a system of two electrons that are strongly dipolar coupled to one another, and each of those electrons is then strongly uh, hyperfine or uh, electron nuclear coupled to one or more nearby nuclei. Typically, these are protons in the sample. 